Good evening. Welcome to Poem Praise 2. Peace be upon you. Love Trump's Game, Chapter 4, reads as such. Yo, boo, you work in that dress. Topps Jackson smiled in appreciation the second Nima opened his front door and stepped inside his house. He clutched his cell phone tighter while his free hand did a slow massage of his shirtless chest before finding his way down to his grown area. Yeah, man, I'm still here. You like? Nima threw her head back seductively and deliberately ran her tongue along her red lips. She catwalked over to the white leather sofa where he sat and placed her oversized Gucci bag down, slow motion like. She spun her body around only to stop to give him an ample view of her high and perfectly rounded asset. Hell yeah, boo. I like it a lot. Good. She had his attention. Nothing turned Tops on more than watching what he often referred to as her boobalicious behind. Nima made her lips look pouty as her hungry eyes caught the stinging in his sweatpants. And no panties to get in the way. She whispered to keep from being heard by the person he was talking to on the phone. Is that right? Tops was licking his lips with mouth in excitement. Check it out. My little freak of the week is here. Yeah, I'm feeling you big time. Nima sat down next to him and began rubbing his wide chest, marveling at the results of what four days per week of pumping iron could do. Washboard abs. Felt like hard rubber beneath her manicured fingers. Did you miss me? Slick man, hold up a fucking minute. Tops took the cell phone away from his ear. Hell yeah, I did. What took you so damn long to get here? You know I hate to wait. Baby, I know you do. But I had to wait for him to get the money from his safe and then started counting it and talking about nothing. I got here as fast as I could. Nima run one of her hard nipples to keep his mind focused on the pleasure they could be having later. The hell you did, but that's all right. Check this. Let me finish handling my biz and I'll deal with you as soon as I'm done. Know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, make yourself useful and go make me a sandwich real quick. And don't forget to wash your hands first. Excuse me? Make you a what? She knew better. One look at his twisted sneer confirmed that her response jumped off incorrectly. Bitch, did I stutter? You heard me. I said I'm hungry and for you to go make me a damn sandwich. A few seconds of defiance flashed in Nima's big eyes before she came to her senses. Oh, damn, what the hell am I thinking? Disobedience was a no-no. Tops Jackson was a man who hated to be told no. At 35, he was 12 years her senior but looked younger, a young face that belonged to an old spirit. If Tops told you to do something, regardless of what the task was, you sucked it up and you did it. End of story. Sure, Daddy. She sniffled and stood up. What kind of sandwich would you like? Try using your brain for a change and surprise me. His words had come out more like an insult. Too bad. He watched her walk away knowing that he had to hurry up and wrap up the business so he could deal with her. Lucky bitch. He smiled to himself. He could name a slew of freaks waiting to take her place and Nima happened to be the flavor of the week. When he got through with her luscious behind, she wouldn't be able to walk straight for weeks. The thought made him grin. He put his cell phone back to his ear. Yeah, man, like I was saying, that area is ours and we don't back down. Hell, send some soldiers out there to pop their asses. Every last one. In the large room, Nima could barely contain herself. What an asshole, she mumbled, looking around the state-of-the-art kitchen. Tops had owned the 3,000 square foot home for all of two years and she still wasn't used to it. Each time she paid him a visit, her top-of-the-line expensive surroundings and the split-level dwelling nearly took her breath away. Ooh-wee, and just think, this could be all mine one day. Mrs. Tops Jackson. Hell yeah, that shit had a good ring to it. She popped her fingers and danced herself over to the sink with the intention of washing her hands. Forget him, darn crazy bastard. She reached under her dress and rubbed her hands back and forth over her pussy. 
There, eat some good coochie, coochie germs, nigga. She then walked over to the Y Sub Zero refrigerator and poured a towel and marble where everything she looked. Everything was tastefully done with a mere hint of a woman's touch, thanks to the services of professional interior decorator. Quiet as it was kept, Nima felt that she could have done a better job, but Topsy acted funny every time she broached the subject. Even guilt going so far as to joke, yeah, and then you'll be moving your shit in. More than once he made it clear that he wasn't ready for a cohabitation, at least not with her. Whatever she mumbled, she didn't need to be underneath him 24-7 anyway. She pulled out plastic containers filled with assorted deli meats and cheese and got busy. Fix me a sandwich. Count this money. Pick my package up. Nima do this and Numi do that. She didn't like it. The way he talked to her sometimes is quick temper, nor the way he treated her when his so-called cronies were around. Just because he was the father of her two kids didn't mean he owned her. Topps Jackson was arrogant and demanding. She couldn't say that she loved the man, but the love of his money and the lifestyle he provided remained solid. Must think I'm his damn maid or something. Nima had known from the beginning that their relationship would be a difficult one. They had met over seven years ago at the Pink Kitty Cat over on Slauston and Overhill Drive where flashing fake IDs had gotten her and her running crew in, flashing Big Bang practically all night. Tops had ended up buying them a truckload of drinks, chilling like a big baller. Tops had even shared news about a off-the-hook party. He had singled her out with his sexy smile and seductive eye contact, and she had enjoyed every minute of his attention, sucking it up like a lunge, like a sponge absorbed water. They met, they clicked, and less than a week later, he was dicking her down good. Good friends with benefits on the real. Tops treated her better in the beginning. Still, she stayed because she loved the new Range Rover he bought her and spending his money having access to drugs and being his baby mama, his first lady, was the icing on the cake. Nigga, your ass need to learn how to treat a woman. That's what you need to do. Nima was putting a finishing touch on the monster sandwich. She turned around to find a place for the culinary masterpiece, and there he was. Oh, she jumped startled. Dang, Tops, don't be sneaking up behind me like that. You scared me. Damn. She hadn't even heard him come into the room. He was like that sometimes, quiet and sneaky like a cat. Baby, you ready to eat? Her query was about food, but the look in Top's eyes suggested something else. Hell yeah, I'm ready. I'm starving. He grabbed a sandwich and bit into it, but after a few bites, tossed it aside. Guess that takes care of one appetite. Hey, thought you said you was hungry. I took my time with that sandwich. For real? Guess that means I have to take my time with you. But first, did you take care of the business for me? Took your ass long enough. You know I hate waiting. Like he had to ask. Don't I always? You have my money, right? Don't be silly. Of course I have your cash, Tops. Was standing so close that she could smell the soapy scent from his recent shower. Thick hair from his chest brushed against her arms. Baby, you know I'm always on target. She moved her body closer into his for a long, hard kiss. Tongues battled for a position before someone had to come up for air. Damn, girl, you always excite the hell out of me. You know that, right? She moaned, um, and that's a good thing. What? Say we take this to the bedroom. He hefted her body up to straddle his like she was a light as a feather. Her clingy red dress rolled up and over her hips to expose her bare assets. Hell yeah, but you know how I am. Cleanliness first. Too caught up with the kisses to her neck and nibbled to her sensitive earlobe, Nima knew exactly what he was hinting about. Tops was a man who enjoyed a good tongue probing between her honey brown thighs, but such a treat always followed a bath or a steamy shower. Always. Oh, baby, let's just do it. Live on the edge. Still straddling his body, Nima allowed him to carry her into the spacious master bathroom, bedroom where he eased her meaty rear end onto the marble countertop. His tongue was practically down her throat as his hand fondled the sweet and delicate pink between her womanly foes. Neva was about to explode with her first release before he abruptly stopped. I'll turn the shower on for us. Damn, Neva thought. 
Here he goes again with that mess. Baby, I'm already sweet clean. I took a long bath before I dropped the kids off at mom's. She planned a few ginger kisses on his neck. And you smell good already, like you just showered. She grabbed the rim of his sweatpants and playfully tugged. Let's get naked and get busy. He smiled at her, but something about his eyes took away from it. I showered a couple hours ago waiting for you. Now, take that shit off. Tops, I told you I don't need another shower. I'm good. Her tone was firm. Bitch, how many times I have to tell your ass about giving me a hard time? He walked over, grabbed a clutch of her hair, and pulled her, screaming, and all over, over to the marble shower stall where he cut on the water, adjusted the temperature, and pulled her into the stream. They were wedged between two large potted palms that graced a large shower area. Top, stop it. I don't want my hair wet. Stop it now. I'm not playing. Should neither am I. He pulled the ruined wet garment up over her head and flung it to the floor. Before she could protest more, he had his body pressed hard into hers. All six feet of a man, complete with a six-pack and a half. Nima scurrying and wibble, but he was a brick wall that couldn't be moved. Warm water pounded flesh as he nuzzled his lips against her neck with her still trying to assert rejection. Tops reached for the bottle of liquid soap. Here! He said, passing it to her, you wash my back and I wash yours. Stubborn at first, she took it and began the process. His back, his buttocks, tight like a drum. The back of his legs, he turned around to face her, his dick pressed against her wet thighs. Damn you, Tops, you be tripping. One minute she had been ready to claw out his eyes, but such aggression rolled away when his mouth locked into hers. Looked at my, look at my hair, she swooned, coming up for air. It's all jacked up now. Yeah, but don't I make it worthwhile? He took the mango scented soap from her hands. Don't be mad, girl. Spread them pretty darn legs. Nigga, you didn't have to ruin my dress. She turned her back to him, but that had never stopped him before. It, always, it was always tops, way or no way. His hands lathered soap onto her perfect rear like a professional waxing an extensive vehicle. You still feeling mad at me? Oh, Daddy, no, that feels so good. She moaned as his hand soaked between her legs, slowly lathering her delicate spots, fingering slipping in and out of her wet one. She could feel him using that handheld shower head to rinse the places he wanted to get to. Her ki He kissed her before placing that shower head back on his cradle, then pulled her down onto the thick rubber matted shower stall that was large enough for four bodies to lay side by side. He was a comfortable fit, and felt her shiver as he kissed the middle of her thighs, his tongue tasting sweet nectar. Love how you taste too, boo. And I love how you taste me. The thrill of his warm tongue between her legs, the lukewarm water cascading down on them, made her back arch and welcome every sensual second of it. What's up now? Still mad about your hair? He asked rising up on his knees to slide ten inches into her. The sounds of pleasure filled the room, mixing with the patter of water, hitting their tangled bodies. Now that does complete chapter four. Next in Love Trump's Game is chapter five. So stay tuned to see what happens after they just did what they do and do what they did. Hmm. All right. From me to you, be blessed. Coming from you to me, home praise too. And I'll holler at you later, okay? Later, y'all.